Hi, welcome to Dairy News, Q&A edition, and the first Dairy News of the year. We hope you've all been safe and healthy. Let's dive right in and get to the questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe. So here's a question about uh, missing the office, working from home, and how we are doing, like working on Hay Day during this time. Basically, I think working from home is really working well for the Heyday team. We are communicating well, we're getting stuff done. The whole farm pass feature was done completely remotely. Um, we, we've already been working together for so long that we kind of know how we work. But I do miss being with the team all the time. Like There is this personal connection that's hard to get when you're not in the same room, at least sometimes. But we do manage to get things done. We're not delaying things because of working from home. We're, we're I think we're doing well. Um, and of course, like I miss the, the people a lot. I miss the plushies around the office, but I do have a cat at home, which is better than plushies. Sorry. Next question is about the creator codes. So for those who don't know, the creator codes are a way to support your favorite Heyday YouTubers. Every official um, Heyday YouTuber who is in the creator program, they get a code. And if you, the player, use their code when purchasing something from the game shop, you can support that, that YouTuber. So if you're a fan of any Heyday YouTuber and you'd like to support them, you can find their code in the video description. Okay, and now a question about the seasonal derbies. Back in the day, we used to have derbies that were themed um, on holidays like Halloween or winter um, and we have since stopped doing them basically because those derbies they had more incidents of specific tasks like if it's Halloween maybe it would ask you to produce more pumpkins um, what happened usually was that the newspaper was flooded because like everyone was getting pumpkin tasks so there were a lot of pumpkins and the newspaper would only have pumpkins so that's why we stopped them and of course since then we've added so many derby varieties that we don't think it's necessary to continue with these all right so now a time machine question what would we change from the earlier design if we could and also how far ahead we plan the game's development. One thing that we in the team talk about often is that if we could read, like if we were back in 2012, 2011, when this game was being made, um, we would have added limits to how much, co how many coins, how many vouchers the players can have at any time. And this is basically to avoid the problem of players having millions and millions of coins. That would have helped. But of course, nowadays, it doesn't fit to change the game because right now it doesn't, doesn't work anymore. About planning the, the development of the game, basically we work uh, like we plan six months in advance. We don't really like planning like a year or more in advance, basically because it could become like too rigid. Like we, we like being able to, to change our plan whenever necessary because Game development is, is very um, dynamic, so we like doing things more, yeah, improvised in that way. All right, and now about the newspaper. Sometimes people ask for a search for the newspaper that you could maybe, like, say, I want to find a cheesecake, I want to buy one right now, and then the newspaper would give you a cheesecake to buy because someone else was selling it. The problem with this idea is that you know how already now it's quite hard to find even if you find something good in the newspaper it's very hard to grab it because someone else might have seen it and bought it before you if we had a search function everyone would be searching for specifically the thing they want and mostly they would be searching for high value things because you're probably not going to be looking for wheat and carrots right so what would happen is it would be even more impossible to buy anything. Like things would just disappear as soon as they appear because at any time there would be people searching for everything. So, and also it's not just a design thing, it's also a huge technical feature like um, servers and code and all that thing that I don't work with. 
um, but it's it's big. It's not that simple. So both in the design sense and in the technical sense, it's not something that we're gonna do. And now we have a few questions about time-limited or special decorations that the player might get in the Derby or the Valley or from offers, and if we might reintroduce them so that current players might buy them for diamonds or for coins. Um, basically, we do have a plan to reintroduce um, special decorations from the past, but we are still figuring out the process of the timeline of how the, those decorations might go from being very exclusive to being accessible. So it's in the works, so stay tuned. And now a question about the sanctuary. Um, will the sanctuary be expanded? Um, well, we have some ideas floating around regarding this, which may or may not make it to the game. But all I can say is, um, stay tuned. You know, something might happen. Keep the cows. What are some animals you'd like to see in the sanctuary? And now we have a couple questions about Heyday Pop, about are we going to add characters or the puzzles or decorations and graphics from Heyday Pop into Heyday? And those are great questions. Um, we in the Heyday team, we really enjoyed Heyday Pop. I played it so much. Um, but in the end, like these are different projects. They were two different teams. The technology used in both games are completely different. Um, the code base, the art style, there are differences that it's not that simple to just plop something from Heyday Pop into Heyday. Puzzles don't really fit the Heyday game because, like, yeah. Heyday Pop was a game about playing the puzzles, Heyday is a game about building your farm, so there is a disconnect there in mechanics. And we do think about adding some elements, like you can see the baby chicks, they came from Heyday Pop. Um, but they, it does need a lot of reworking if we want to add like a decoration from Heyday Pop into Heyday. It's not just grabbing it and putting it in the game. So it could happen that we add some things, but don't expect like Heyday Pop to move into Heyday completely. That's not going to happen. All right, and now a question about being able to undo actions that you take in your farm. So like taking stuff out of the production queues from a building or removing something from the roadside shop. Um, the reason that we don't do that, and this is like, it's not by chance, it's by, by design, is that Heyday is pretty much a strategy game of how you fill your orders and how you build your farm. And it's all about making the meaningful choices of how am I going to get the thing that I need at the time when I need it. If we allowed you to just undo any everything that you do, nothing would be meaningful because you can just undo it if you do a mistake. Or if right now you want something that you didn't want two minutes ago and you accidentally filled your dairy or something. So we want people to strategize and make those decisions that stick. That's basically why. And about the roadside shop, um, if we allowed you to take stuff out of the roadside shop back into your barn, it would be a little bit like temporary storage for your things, right? You could just like, oh, my barn is full. I'm just gonna dump a bunch of things in the roadside shop, take some other things that I need and then get them back. So it's not in line with those meaningful choices that we would like players to play the game with. And now a question about my favorite part of the game, the food. It's... Designing the food always makes me hungry. First thing to say, it makes me hungry. Um, basically, when I design the food, I think about finding the holes in the game, like the places where we can fit new, new food products. So, for example, when we're adding new crops or new fruits, I always think about... They can't cancel each other out. Like, if we have the lettuce, which we do have, I wouldn't add spinach because it's too close and then players might be confused like, wait, does the salad take spinach or does it take lettuce? It's, it's, there is a competition there for the, like, for you to remember which is which. 
So for example, when we added mint to the game, that was a really good addition because there were no other herbs. So the players could very, you could very easily know like if it takes a herb and a herb, it's mint. And this is one thing, people always ask to put blueberries in the game. And I really love blueberries. Blueberries are probably one of my, my favorite berry. But the game already has raspberries, blackberries, and strawberries. Like there is already enough. We don't need one more berry to make more muffins. I am strongly against putting blueberry in the game. And I always say it whenever the, a team member says, let's put blueberries, I say no. And that's why. Um, and also like, there's also coming up with new products, right? Not only crops. That takes some research. When there is a new crop, like eggplant, I would usually search online for what are some recipes that are made with eggplant and then see what the in ingredients are used, what which ingredients are used and um, see if we can like condense those ingredients to the four ingredients of a Haydee recipe or less. Because if an, uh, we need to make a really complex recipe and we need eight different ingredients for it, it's not gonna fit the game. Also, like, it's not just me. Whenever I need new products, um, I do ask the team and they give me a lot of great suggestions. So it's, it's a team effort. And of course, like, it's not just me coming up with ideas. I do gather all these reference photos and I send it to the artists who then make it really beautiful. And final question. Any plans to add anything new to the game? Well, there are always plans. We're always thinking about what to add to the game, whether it's like some feature or crops or content, any kind of stuff. And we're always constantly checking the feedback that the players send us. So if you have an idea of something that you'd like to see in the game, let us know, we'll take a look at it. Like I've said sometimes during this video, like it's not as easy as just taking an idea and putting it into the game. There are some considerations, so we can't really add everything that's suggested, but we do read and consider all the things. So thanks, keep those suggestions coming. Those were some great questions. Thank you to everyone who sent in your questions and comments. Um, know that we do read them all, even if we don't have time to go through all of them in this video. Um, keep the questions coming. If you do, we'll be able to make more Q&A episodes for you. And that's all for this time. Bye!